Good evening, Free Enterprise fans. We are here with the second of four uh, qualifier rounds for the World Series of Free Enterprise, and it looks like our starting character tonight is... It's Edward! Why is it Edward? Well, uh, I think we got lucky that we got an Edward start tonight. No, um, this is, uh, as you see in the middle of the screen here, Edward Percent. The only character that we will have is Edward. We can have up to five Edwards in the party by the end. So if you like uh, bards and their spooniness, this is the, the flag set for you. Yeah, um, this one can uh, scare people off a little bit because Edward can be a tricky character to use. Um, and I guess we should also start with some introductions as well. I'm Beyond Gray, and with me tonight is Rex Raoul. Uh, Hello. tracking, we have... Tracking. Oh, uh, right here. I believe we've got Spape D tracking and Scala Kitty on the restream. This seed is her work, so if you're waiting for a Scala Kitty classic, we are... This could very well be happening. Yeah, w one can dream. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this uh, this Edward percent can definitely seem uh, a bit uh, tough because Edward is generally considered to be one of the worst characters in the game. He doesn't get much HP. He doesn't get much attack. Uh, he does get pretty good agility, uh, but that's about it. Luckily, we are playing with the spoon flag, so if we are able to find the spoon, he does have access to a very powerful attack. Yes, unfortunately, uh, because we're on a uh, the because of our key item distribution, which is uh, K P K, um, there is a one in four chance that the spoon is not in play, and they are off. Yeah, and we've got uh, four runners. I think we've got probably about 20 people running tonight, uh, but we're going to be looking at Kirchen, Night Dew, Boo Bear, and Maggie the Cat on their streams. Yes, uh, looks like our opening key item is the hook. This is actually something that I'm always really happy to see uh, on Edward Percent. Uh, I mean, not, not just because of the hook seed potential, which is amazing as a viewer, but Edward... Uh, you know, you're gonna want that Adam Adorber. Uh, he's fragile, um, so being able to get a pink till and actually cash it in is really important. Unfortunately, the pink till is another one of those items that can be swapped out. Yeah, absolutely. The, the pink tail, if, if our runners are lucky enough to get both a pink tail and a spoon, they'll have one Edward who's gonna be a real powerhouse at the end, but we also have a T4, so we're going to see a lot of looting. Now, uh, since Edward has a very limited set of equipment that he can actually equip, we might see the vast majority of these items that are being opened uh, or found in these chests to be sold. But we do have stuff to spend it on, because we have got uh, both J items, uh, Japanese items in this, and uh, S3. So we've got very good stuff for sale in shops today. Yeah, as we can see here, we've got coffins and stardusts, and those are fantastic for getting over that initial hump. Another thing, too, that we might see from the S3 that you don't normally see in other races is that we are actually very likely to see players go into the weapon and armor shops, uh, because Edward, in particular, is a very good archer, and S3 enables all arrows, up, up to and including Artemis, to be for sale in a weapon shop. Yeah, without a doubt, I, hunting for Artemis arrows in a shop is definitely something that I think... I'm not sure if the four runners that we're seeing are going to do that, but I'm certain that some of the racers tonight will be looking for that. Uh, we also see Wu Bear heading over to uh, the left side of Troya Castle, because we also have free lunch enabled, so there's going to be a free key item here. And we've or got the pass. Yes, so. Yeah, not technically a key item, but kind of free item adjacent, is what I call it. Yeah, um, it's also not as useful on this flag set as it might be. Uh, because if you look at the flag summary in the middle of your screen, you'll see that there's something called no sirens. You can still find a siren in a chest, 
but you can't buy them at shops, which means, as far as grinds go, the best place you're gonna want to grind is on the moon. So, at least for me, I don't I consider the Darkness Crystal to be basically essential on this flight set. And uh, thanks to Scala Kitty for the subscription. Yes, uh, please continue to enjoy those wonderful emotes that you made. <laughs> But yeah, I, going to the moon and grinding there is really the only viable grinding option. Other in other flag sets, you can get away with uh, doing things like a door grind in the uh, in the sealed cave. But in this one, because of Edward's really poor HP growth, even if you destroy all the doors in there, at the uh, after you've got ten key items for the double experience, he's still going to be tough to survive any of the big bags. Yeah, um, if you're doing it, if you're careful, you don't necessarily need that. Oh, and I'm seeing that, uh, where is Blue Bear? I don't that know, but it's is, a very nice shop. <laughs> that is Troya. We've got the Bacchus Wines. That's another near essential for Edward, just because he doesn't have any magic. The only thing he's going to be doing in fights is either attacking, in which case you're going to want that, or tactical hiding, which... That same shop also had uh, um, Moon Veils, which is a very uh, good survivability item. Yeah. yeah Although he is know... getting blocked yeah. by the Lady in Troya, does not <laughs> want to leave. Yes, and if you're not familiar with the Japanese items, the Moon Veil, uh, what it does is it casts a wall on you, which is a great spell when you don't have access to cast it. It also places something called Barrier, which is like Blink, where you're completely immune to physical attacks, except where Blink will go away after a couple of physical hits, Blink out barrier lasts a very, very long time. Uh, longer than pretty much any fight you're likely to get into. It will fade off eventually, but it's, it's very rare to see that happen. It is a fantastic buff. It basically makes you immune. Yeah, and there's some certain spots, like right now we're this could possibly be a hook seed. If we're looking at a strong physical boss in the uh, King Queen Evelyn spot of a hook seed, a moon veil can really save your butt neck. So. Yeah, like that is incredibly important to have on hand. In the meantime, it looks like everybody's heading over to Damsian Castle, very uh, popular early spot. There's a, uh, a basement that has a lot of free chests. Uh, you could get an extra Edward and a, and a hovercraft by going up to the top. And since we have a hook, that means that we have access to the Edward Cave and the shop in there now, too. Yeah, and Kirchen's heading into the ant line, found a samurai bow, or an elven bow and some Artemis arrows, which is fantastic finds. Yeah, the elven bow is uh, the third best bow. Uh, I think they're going to hope to find Artemis and Samurai Bows instead, but uh, the uh, Elven Bow will get the job done in a pinch, too. Yeah, and there is an advantage to the Elven Bow, um, which can really make it handy in that it is also a mage killer, so mm -hmm. anything that it, uh, any arrow that it shoots will do quad damage against mage-type enemies, and some of those could be super hard to deal with, like the Asura fight. Yeah, or, or the Mega Sisters is another one that can be nice. Uh, also, thank you for the subscription, Penguinator. Yes, Penguinator, of course, won our opening seed, so he's getting to kick back and relax while everybody else fights it out to get to that final table. Probably hoping that uh, it's a much harder seed. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we see the uh, the four fiends of the elements fight uh, at the bottom of the antlion cave. Uh, Kirchen is in this fight right now. Yeah, that's not bad to find here at all. Looks like Kirchen has a bunch of white arrows for just this contingency. And but no, he's not. He's gone through that and now has to uh, just chip through the rest. Switching back yeah, to Artemis now. This should be simple. Oh, here's where that Elven Bow is going to come in handy as he yep. equips that. Because unlike the regular fight, uh, in the Elements fight, um, the uh, 
the Rubicant there is actually a mage type. Yeah, only during the the Rubicant part of it, but yes, definitely counts. And that that's a very head for his trouble. Yeah, well, Blue Bear has been uh, repelled by Mist Dragon at Fabul. And, and that was a very heads up play by Kirchin to switch that bow mid fight to the uh, to the one that's going to be the most effective against the Rubicon. So, very good heads up playing there by, by Kirchin. Yeah, Kirchin loves his Edwards, and I'm really glad that we have him on restream for this. And uh, over in Wubir's side, uh, looks like he found the uh, the shop that sells the Artemis arrows in uh, Silvera. So when all the other runners make their, uh, if they route Silvera into their shopping, uh, they'll be able to uh, buy those Artemis arrows if they uh, take the time to poke into that weapon shop. Yes, and there's bandanas for sale as well, which is another very nice find. Um being able to kit out an entire party in uh, bandanas and karates, which are your best shot gear, um, that is to see. And we have some solid workhorse items in the same shop there. Yeah, Kira 3's uh, life potions are very nice. Uh, you're going to need to do, do a lot of grinding in this, and uh, with the uh, G Elf flag, we have the life glitch on. So, uh, for uh, fights where there are multiple enemies, as you kill one, you can use a life potion. And basically, the end result is you get double experience for killing him, like by using that item. Yeah, at least if you're good, you can sometimes squeeze out multiple uses of that uh, of that life potion and sometimes get even more. Yeah, or in my case, it would be if you get lucky. <laughs> people who are good who can do it, people who are lucky can do it too. So. Yes, yes. I do it by dialing my battle speed down, which is the opposite of being good. <laughs> Ninja hats as well, which is the other really nice hat to find. Where is Night Dude? That's an egg art. That, that's a really nice find as well. Yeah, egg art's a, a shop that I think, like, if there's going to be weapon shops that people want to avoid, egg art's one of those that is kind of out in the corner and there's lots of people blocking the path a lot of ways. So that might be one that people are a little more reluctant to check. But uh, Night Dude making that check and getting rewarded with those ninja hats. Yeah, like. I think like this really is a flag set that rewards checking those those weapon and armor shops. Um, I, I I definitely agree. You definitely want to find those Artemis uh, arrows. You can find samurai bow in a shop. That's good too. And those uh, items like the ninja hat, like the uh, black belt, you know, things that you can find like that are just great too. Yeah, and you know, ninja hats. When you're running with five different five characters who are all the same character. Having items that can manipulate the agility of them become even more important because otherwise everybody's all gonna be at the same agility and that's not necessarily great in this in this ATB. Yeah, just being able to skew out who goes faster. Yeah, and you might also ha they might want also want to keep an eye out for something like uh like a diamond arm that might be the about the best arm that you can get to set to this. Yeah, that's the runes, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the rune is probably a little bit better if we had mages, but I like the diamond in this one. Yeah, I, but they're I, very similar. Yeah, they they are very similar. I like the rune just because. Um, actually, you know what? I think they have the same magic defense and one, and the diamonds cost a tenth of the price, so never mind. Kirchen uses his J-Adam to get through that Miss Dragon that uh, fought off uh, Wu Bear, gets a rat kill for his trouble. He'll be able to cash that in right away with our starting hook. And Knight Dew heading over to Missidia with this uh, free lunch gets another couple efforts. Yeah, you can fill out your party really quickly with this uh, when you don't actually need to care about who you're getting. And, ooh, that is one of our new fab palettes, the Goth Edward. No, don't! Don't send him home! Take 
take the god though, he's the best. Looks like Kurt should head right out right away to check out that rat tail, see what we get there. Trading it in at the Adamic Grotto. That's a sand ruby. Um, uh, I suppose you could turn it in for another Edward. Yeah, or, you know, a free heal. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is a slow free heal, but a free heal nonetheless. Oh, uh, but he is going into Silvera. We'll see if he decides to pop into that weapon shop and get rewarded with those Artemis arrows. Yeah, uh... Night Dew also in uh, Silvera. Uh, let's see if he goes to the weapon shop. Oh, he was about to pass it by, but he went back in, and I bet he's feeling good to know about that, even if he can't afford Ooh. him right now. Oh, okay, so he's just low on cash. Okay, so yeah, he'll be back. Almost certainly. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Maggie the Cat and Woo Bear are still fighting off that D-mist. This is... Oftentimes, the very beginning of these these seeds can be the most difficult because almost anything can take out an Edward. So when you're fighting at these low levels, even though we can get items that do more damage, like we saw the star, Stardust for sale, we've seen Dancing Daggers, Artemis Arrows, we can do okay amount of damage, but we still have very low hit points at the beginning of these runs. Yeah, and looks like Kirchin just breezed right by that shop with the Artemis bows. I hope that doesn't bite him later. Like, most of your grind options uh, in the end involve dragons, which is another reason why those arrows are super important. Yeah, that's a that that's huge. Um, and I, I don't know if uh, Kirchin figures that he's got enough arrows from. Uh, chests that he doesn't need them. I mean, we did find those Artemis arrows early on, at least one pack, maybe a couple of packs of those in treasure chests early, so not sure. Like, maybe he feels confident already and doesn't need to check those. But we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. And there's our first sighting of a dragon up on Mount Ordeals. Night Dew and Maggie the Cat both get through Faboon and get their uh, rat tail, which will not be very helpful. And Kirchin get him past that pale dim without too much problems. In that first spot, it's not too scary. Uh, it would I think it would have been a lot scarier as the back attack fight. Speaking of not scary as a back attack fight, um, here we have King Queen Evelyn. Yeah, that's a relief. Like, of the early game spots that are really, that can be scary, that second fight in Ordeals is definitely one of them. And so that is a relief to see them there. Yeah, and it looks like he's gonna go for a kill on them instead of just letting him go. But uh, this is not a super high hit point spot. It might well be faster. You see, even with this uh, King and Queen Evelyn, which is a pretty easy fight, one of the Edwards goes down in it. Because that's just how weak our characters are at the beginning of this run. Yeah, like, there's not a lot of hit points at hand there. But no, he there gets is that, not. But he gets that swag road change off, ends with an Edward cheering. And Maggie, is in Silvera, does find the Artemis arrows. That will be great for them. Yeah, Maggie and Knight do both buying those Artemis arrows right now. So that's that's good for both of those runners. We get a Baron key up at the top of Mount Ordeals from Kirchen. Yeah, 
Yeah, I believe it was Odin at the start of the game. Um, not a bad spot for him. So we'll have yeah. to see how that plays out. Cause... Especially considering that Zeus rages were available in a shop. Uh, so if you just want to like buy some lightning elemental damage dealers, uh, you can probably make pretty uh, pretty good damage on uh, on Odin there. Yeah, and you know Baron has a lot of chests for that uh, for all oh, yeah. of those wonderful T four needs. Night Dew sadly finds the Sand Ruby, but another key item for the pile. We'll be trying to take on these Magus sisters, and that Delta attack is doing some serious damage. Yep, but Cindy is down. That should uh, solve the problem there. Yeah, that uh, that elven bow is doing some work. And night to uh, going back, covering the uh, ant lion cave uh, that the other runners have already done. Yeah, oh, for the spoon! That's got to be a really exciting fight for Rubera. Yeah, fighting that spoon at this point means, even though we still have the possibility of a hook seed, uh, it's uh, a lot more like, I think I could do this <laughs> with a hook seed if I've got that spoon. Yeah, and if you've never seen how hard that spoon hits, even on a really low level, Edward, keep an eye on Blue Bear's screen. It's gonna be impressive. Even just see his attack power here when he equips it. Now, oh, it seems like he does not realize, though, that uh, in order to get your best attack power out of a bow and arrow, you need to equip the, the arrows in the main hand. Yeah, if you're right-handed and you ever tried uh, doing a blood arrow <laughs> on the offhand, it don't work so good. And it looks like he's taking that hovercraft to Edlin. Yeah, he might be uh, ready to commit to the uh, the hook dive. Might just want to check out shops and uh, and the chests too. So we'll see. And looks like both Kirchen and Maggie the Cat now uh, going through the Baron Inn. They're going to be rewarded with their spoon if they're able to uh, best the Maggie sisters here in the second fight. Yeah, and I don't foresee either of these having trouble. Um, it can be a tricky fight, and but the other nice thing too is, you know, that second fight there does not actually give any experience points, so you really don't need to worry at all so long as somebody lives to do damage exactly I, that's one thing that uh that uh people should keep in mind there are certain boss fights that don't give experience and that's one of them um and um like we saw during uh Wu bear's fight there we kept reviving the one that got hit by the uh uh the uh, delta attack now in his case he only had three edwards so it might have just been a contingency uh, but in the case of, uh, like, Kirchhoff, who has five, it's probably, you see, he's not even bothering reviving those two Edwards that are that are down right now, and I think that's probably just the best way of handling it. Yeah. And Kirchhoff, and Night Dew, and Maggie are all near simultaneously. All Night Dew shortly will be. Uh, yes, getting that spoon for everybody. Well, they found the uh, stale man chest, uh, and now is uh, going shopping in Edlin. Eblin. Well, we found those eagle eyes, so that's going to be a very, <laughs> very nice oh. thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Kirchen's checking the Baron shops, a uh, weapon and armor shops, just the armor shop. 
Oh, Weird Bear does find elven bows for sale in Evelyn. I think that's the best bow that we've seen for sale. I mean, we've seen the Artemis arrows, but I don't think we've seen a bow better than an elven bow for sale yet. Yeah, we've picked up a samurai bow from the chest in the antlion. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, Yelvin's been the best that we've uh, seen for sale. And the samurai is great because it gives a bonus to the uh, strength, so it's kind of better in most situations. Uh, however, we, we have seen a couple spots like that Mega Sister spot where the uh, that Elven bow really shines. Yeah. And looks like Kirchen is heading to Baron right now. Maggie's gonna be heading up ordeals. Ooh, Woo Bear just finds an Artemis bow in a chest in Evelyn Cave. I love that T4. And looks like Night Dew is looting Evelyn Castle, which will. A lot of chests, a lot of experience points here. Yeah, it's a good way to bulk up your characters a bit before trying to make a dive into possibly going through the other uh, crowd. Yeah, and normally, you know, that you might not necessarily need that on a different kind of party, but as you can see, these Edwards are very fragile. And thank you for that raid, Big Dunka. Kirchen now at that uh, Odin fight. It looks like we have a Mylon is going to be the boss in the Rubicon spot. And with that purple robe, not sure if it's Mylon Z or Mylon in the gas, but one of them is going to be that fight. Yeah, neither of them are really going to be hugely problematic. Um, Mylon Z is going to be the preferable one to find just because you can move Bill straight through that, but the other one is not a big deal. Yeah, in any case, neither of them are going to be uh, too difficult for our runners, I don't think. So. Yeah, like, even with Edward hit points, that that's fine. That's that's actually a really nice thing to see. And Kirchen finds CPU past uh, the Odin and Baron. And... That should be pretty simple to deal with here, just because... Uh, Every single Edward starts the game affected by what's called the back row glitch, which is once you equip an item that lets you attack safely from the back row with, for full damage, you always attack from uh, the back row with full damage, and you always attack to the back row with full damage, so that CPU is going to get shredded. Yeah, the fact that we've got that spoon uh, makes what could be a potentially annoying fight into a pretty simple fight. Uh, and uh, Woo Bear, the hits keep coming. We find a power robe in a chest in Upper Babel too. So continuing to get just better and better gear on his Edwards throughout this run. Yeah, the power robe is, of course, the best uh, non-adamant armor that Edward can wear. And uh, it's, it's real nice on him. Yeah, nice boost to the strength, so... Uh, it's going to be helping to do the damage with both the bow and arrow and the spoon. Well, and really any weapon that he puts, even the harps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you don't really want to use a power robe with a harp. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I think getting your Edwards off of you as quickly as possible is a pretty solid strategy. <clears throat> Although that he can't sing. Oh, wow, that's, that's so useful. <laughs> I, to be fair, there are a couple niche strategies where you might want to consider using SIG um, well, for those, but they're not really very... I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that, like, Ogo Pogo and Song of Sleep is just, like, or Lullaby or whatever works on it or something, because there's always something that you never expect comes into free enterprise, you know? 
Yeah, I mean, the things that could happen just from placing the game into circumstances that it, it, whoever programming it just went, you know, oh, this will never happen, I'm not gonna bother needing to fix it, so let's just leave it as is, I'll use my programming time to do something else. Uh, Night Duke finding a crystal ring in Evelyn Castles. That's going to be a very good defensive item for one of his Edwards. While uh, Wu Bear gets into the real fight. Yes, and that is the Luca key in the Baron trash can. Looks like we've got Kirchin heading up towards Troya, and we it looks like we're going to get a music check. Very oh, nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I really like this. Uh, Wubir is making good time going underground, but especially with a party of Edwards, I like to make sure that there is nothing else that, uh, that there's no magma key upstairs. Yeah, and with the, uh, the, the K flag set that we have today, we know that this is going to be a key item uh, at the bottom of this cave. So there's whether or not it's the magma yeah. key that gets you underground, or something like the Darkness Crystal, which we haven't seen yet, or the Crystal, which we need to win, this is still a pretty good play. Uh, and Kirchner doesn't know that it's just Mylon Z there, uh, and you could just use a Moon Veil to get by it. So at this point, it's just it seems logical to get a few more levels on his Edwards. This seems like a, a smart heads-up play. Yeah, like, especially with the Spoon, I know the, the second I got that spoon, this would be the first place I would go, because that's what that's what's going to make this slot go and just crumble. It does like, look like Wu Bear is having some trouble, though. Um, this this last Edward is taking basically no damage, but the others have all died from non moon bale usage. I believe that this found an ep uh, in a random chest. This is oh. T four after all, so I think that's why. And so at that point, you don't even need a moon bale. Oh, okay, yeah, that, <laughs> just that's take the one damage each turn. Yeah, yeah. The others though, that's that's a nice XP that they're not getting. Yeah, that is the trade-off. This this spot, this Rubiconte spot, does have a pretty good amount of experience that you get there, and so there's four Edwards that are not going to be getting that experience here. All right, but now it's time to check out uh, DJ Spooty B's Rockin' Tunes up on Kirch's screen. All right, let's see what we got here. You like your Final Fantasy VI, everybody? Uh, that's that's a nice one. That that really translates well. And that is, of course, the uh, Cyan's theme from, from Final Fantasy VI. And Kirchen, uh finding the Dark Elves here, a nice, uh, easy fight. They're able to be uh, Hourglassed, so they, which just casts Stop on them, and then they'll get their first round of attacks and then do nothing else for the rest of the fight. Yeah, and then easy life glitches. Yep. No trouble at all to deal with. Night Dew also finding a Power Robe in the... Uh, in the uh, uh, Cave Magnus, so. Yes, I believe Kirchen did pick that one up as well. So lots of nice equipment uh, being found for our enemies here. Yeah, T4 is very nice, and oh, casual Artemis bow. I don't think uh, Kirchen got that chest, did he? I'm not sure. I wasn't checking all the chests, but 
That's not always one that people pick up because it's a little out of the way. Yeah. Night dude seems to be full clearing the chest and got rewarded with a crystal ring there too. So. Yeah, another one of those just... super valuable agility manipulating items like that is fantastic. Uh, not to mention just really good on the defensive side. Oh yeah. And it is also defense against dragons, which again, that's that's your best options on uh, on grinding. Down in the land of summoned monsters, Wu Bear checks the chest there and gets a pink tail. So uh, once uh, he decides to head back up to the overworld, we'll have access to another adamant armor. Yeah, that's gonna be that. That is a great find. I like you really want to go out of your way to get those. Oh, and yet another Artemis bow found in the house in the uh, Land of Summoned Monsters. Yeah, like, these Edwards are going to be very powerful. Which, you know, that is not as weird a statement as you might think it is originally. Um, once you actually get used to this flag set, um, and you realize just what you have to work with with, with an Edward, um, he's, he's really good. Yeah, he, he does have his limitations. His HP is still going to be low no matter what. Uh, but uh, he does have some advantages. His agility is very high. He's very fast. He's got access to the Artemis bow and arrows, which is a pretty good. Um, he can have the power row, which is pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of things that he can that he can use that are good. Uh, yeah, but... and you know, in that hide skill, um, it's easy to write it off. But you know, you could use that to get by a lot of nasty things. Like, any enemy with a predictable attack, you can just bypass that. And that includes a big bang. Yeah, we might see some of our runners uh, use hides during that final fight for that reason. Uh, where it's also really... Um, famously useful is on the uh, evil wall fight. So we, if we see that, it would be kind of neat if we see somebody employ the hide strategy on that one. Yeah, that is a very fun strat there, just because you know, the evil wall will just uh, you know, the way it's scripted, it needs to attack someone. It uh, And if it doesn't have any valid targets in your party, well, uh, there's uh, someone on the uh, screen. Well, here's something interesting. Uh, Kirchen has uh, gone through the Evelyn Cave, but has not been opening all the chests. And we knew that there was a lot of good stuff in there that Wubear picked up, and that's just going to be some equipment that uh, Kirchen kind of leaves on the table. Yeah, I mean, clearly he's satisfied with what he's got, and... You know, he knows what he's doing with Edwards, but uh, I... Uh, He's going to be feeling a crunch, I think. It's it's just one of those uh, kind of interesting questions. Like, do I have enough? And how many chests do I need to open at this point? Uh, looks like he's not even looking for the uh, for the um, uh, Mad Ogre's chest. It's going through all, just zipping past the checks in Upper Babylon. So heading straight to the boss, it looks like. Yeah, he could be feeling behind right now. That's a possibility. He did basically full clear the overworld. But as we see, both Night Dew and Maggie were doing that same thing. And uh, like Kirchen seems to be making pretty good time overall, albeit by skipping some things. Kirchen was also the one who just walked by that uh, shop inside uh, Silvera and did not get those Artemis arrows. Yeah, I mean, we'll see if that works out for him. And Samurai Bow is for sale in Dwarf Castle. That's a very nice find there. I mean, not as nice uh, since he's... Wu Bear is pretty much tripping over Artemis Bow's left, right, and center. And even at this point, uh, Wu Bear's still opening more chests, looting, uh, looting Dwarf Castle. Now, 
the question is how much of this is for more equipment that he wants to find and how much of this is for things to sell so they can buy more items that he wants like cure threes and um, and the like for the second half of the run Bacchuses aren't cheap yeah not at all um having a buffer And now Kirchen enters the real fight. And Maggie the Cat enjoying Mr. Dow's theme. It looks like Night Dew is still opening chests in Evelyn, fighting those stalemen right now. Yeah, and Kirchen just does not even bother. Um, yeah, just went, just went right on through. Yep. And Maggie gets their tower key, and I believe now everyone except Wu Bear has uh, completed basically everything on the overworld. So this is one provides just the adamant, which is not very useful. No, not on this flag set at all. <laughs> Especially since we have the spoon, we have the pink tail. Um, this means the with the adamant there, that means we don't have the legend sword. We can't even cash it in for a free shop, which we don't really want, but uh, you can't even do that. I mean, it would only be nice if there's something like protect rings for sale or if there's something like that. Like a really high-end equipment, but that's still so much time to invest in a shop that might not even pay out. Yeah, and this is S3. Uh, you can really only get that happen on... Uh, Or on not on S four S two. It's only special there. Kirchen able to keep all of his Edwards alive uh, through the Mylan Z fight, so everyone's going to get experience there. And Blue Bear picks up his adamant armor for completing the Pink Tail side quest. Let's see. Love that adamant armor. I do get that Artemis bow. Is about to drop it, but goes. Hey, wait a minute. I think I'd rather keep this one. Yeah. <laughs> are about to get music from Woo Bear, which is... Very nice. Yeah, this is, um... I, I'm not sure what... I mean, this is an interesting play by Woo Bear to go back here. Um, having Dove underground already, like, it seems like maybe Woo Bear thinks he's behind now and is wondering if he needs to go back and do things that were already available to him otherwise. Because otherwise you could see him doing something like Tower or uh, Dwarf Castle to try something that um, that other people who didn't dive the underground fast enough would have access to, but you might think that he's behind at this point. Yeah, and you know, Cave Bag, this is very common to avoid. Yeah. But it is to avoid, you know, on uh, on higher T on higher K levels. Uh, for this, it's you know, every spot you check will have a key item, and it's not something that I think that's 
actually the first time this has come up in the in the World Series. I think every other time there's been extra spots in the pool. Um, so there's far less weight. Back. Well, I think the only times that that wasn't the case were Giant and uh, and Apple Seeds, but those were those were different for their own reasons. So. Uh, I, giant, I think. Um, you're right about the apple seeds, but who cares about where key items are on apple seeds? Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, every, every check you make on, uh, on this flag set is going to bear out something. So, there's a little less concern about a longer time-taking check that's a bad sentence, but uh, about a check about a check that takes a longer amount of time. Just because you are always going to get something. Oh, Night Dew now at the Luge Balnab fight. Uh, the pen up ultimate boss fight before uh, getting underground access with Maggie the Cat not far behind. Looks like Kirchen's doing a save and uh, before uh, trying the uh, lower tower here. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty pretty good play. We've got both... We've, we've got the tower key, so this is a double check. Yeah, I think th I think this is a this is a pretty good play with the two key items in this. Uh, Kirchin could luck out and find Darkness Crystal Crystal here, and then be ready to grind and win the fight. And so I think that's a, a, a smart play. I mean, is that likely? Probably not, but... It's it's possible. It becomes increasingly more possible the longer uh, we go without finding them. That's very true as well. It looks like Kirchen about to find out who that boss is, and looks like we've got Bygen up at the top of the tower. Yeah, that's not... You know... There, there are some bosses that, you know, you never really want to see anywhere, and uh, <laughs> I think Bygan is one of them. Well, Kirchin yeah. does have a, at least one suit of adamant armor, so it should be a, a pretty safe fight, I think. Yeah, this will be safe, it's just not a fun fight. If there, if there was no adamants at this point, then it might be a scary fight, but I, I think this one's going to be okay. Using those grimoires, rolling the chocobo is always the, uh, the wah wah. Yeah, and you know that the the grimoire strats that he's been using, um, Miss Dragon is generally at least as bad for an Edward party as chocobo, just because it is hit point based. But uh, the Grimoire strats he's been using, um, you know, he's been doing well with them. But I'm not super sold, like, relative to just, you know, you know, uh, Artemising up. Right, I think, I think it's uh, a strategy that's really good for the, like, the first half of the run, but it gets, the, the returns are diminishing the longer the seed goes. Yeah. Because you get access to things like these Artemis bows, like the spoon, the adamant armor, and suddenly your physical attacks are just doing so much more reliably. I mean, yeah, you can still get lucky and roll a Bahama, and that'll do major damage, but you can't count on that. Yeah. Because as you see, we see Mist Dragons, we see Chocobo. And that's no bueno. Yeah, not at all.
but uh, Kirchen is pretty much through there. Yeah, having a berserk spoony Edward is going to make short work of most boss. Yeah. And I believe Maggie is as well. And to answer the question in chat, I uh, from DJATC, I don't believe grimoires are weighted. Uh, it's just really easy to look at anything generated by random numbers and go, oh, it's always giving me the bad results because that's just how they work. Well, and you you either remember the times you got the you absolutely needed the Bahamut and you got it. And you like give me anything that does me damage and now the chocobo. So those are the only like the times where it's in the middle and it just does kind of expected things. You're just not going to remember that. Yeah. It's uh. Kirchen now checking the super cannon room, finding the Baron guards there. Kind of unfortunate, would rather see those in a spot uh, where uh, they're kind of difficult to deal with, so that you can use, because uh, they're susceptible to almost every status effect. Uh, you can use almost any item that you want, from mute bells to us, uh, hourglasses to coffins on them. And, uh, yeah, so of course in this slot they have about, you know, Yeah, would rather see a scary boss there because that's a very uh, position. Yeah. Now, I don't think we called it up, but it looked like it was the earth crystal at the top of the tower. And uh, we'll see what the uh, second item here is for completing the uh, the tower key portion of it. And we got our crystal, so that tower key is required. Oh ho! So Kirchen technically in go mode, uh, but is probably going to need the, as we discussed at the top of this uh, run, probably still going to need that darkness crystal to get access to the moon for grinding. Uh, so um, we'll see uh, where Kirchen heads next. Yeah, um... Maybe he hadn't strike to Zeramus. Level 28, I think he might be going for it. He's got... Got big you know, 400 HP? You know what, if anybody knows how to do this, uh, I would call it Kirchen. Um... <laughs> Okay, yeah, he's going for a Reflect Strat. He's buying, stocking up on Veils, and... Yeah, he's going for this. Oh, this is great. This is... This is This is what I was hoping for when I saw Kirchin on Restream. He is... You know, he hasn't been around a lot lately, uh, but this guy is the master of Edward. Like, uh, I, I take back everything I said questioning that, uh... Okay, so, uh, I, because I was describing, I forgot to ask, whose butt are we gonna kick tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not Kirchens. <laughs> wow. Oh, this is amazing. I, I was... Definitely not expecting somebody to uh, fight Zeramus at under 500 HP. So this is great. <laughs> uh, under level 30. He's like level 28 across the board. This is going to be... Oh, 
Look at that. Two of those Edwards don't even have 400 hit points. <laughs> Getting the wine out. And that's you. Stella, help. How do I not know that? I love Breath of Fire 4. This is the Astral Dragon from Breath of Fire 4. Looks so weird out of context. I, I wouldn't have even guessed this is a dragon. <laughs> Breath of Fire 4, these dragons are really weird. I guess so. Alright, well, <laughs> one Edward down, it looks like, but... Not skipping a beat. You've got to hide. And that's going to wipe everybody still standing, that big thing. Come back and revive. We've well, got a little extra time due to the uh, black hole coming up. Got a moonville for the nuke that's coming right after the black hole. Oh, Kirchen, you madman! He's going for a reflect skip, uh, a refill skip, just by reflecting Zerobus' own patterns there. Oh. Oh no no he's po he's he's uh, he's also timing it with the uh, with keeping the spoon going. I got the timed it so that the back is a little uh, come up right after the black hole. This is very nice timing by Tchurchin. Yeah, this is... wow. This is, uh... You know, doing a strategy like this requires very intimate knowledge of Zeromus' script. So this is being done. This is a really fun fight to watch. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry if we're not uh, talking much about the other ones, but this is just absolutely fascinating. Yes, um, and I see Wubear is clearing out Dwarf Castle, got a Dark Knight Cecil, and all that. Um, but uh, yep, getting that nuke counter. And Dwarf provided the bag, the key. And here comes the next hide. The other thing, too, is you're only gonna pull a stunt like this if you think you're really ahead of everyone else. Because as we can see here, this is a time-consuming fight. I think he's not bringing back that Edward, that, uh, that Spoon Edward now. I think we are going for the skip.
Yeah, we are still in the first phase, that's for sure. Because we see the virus there instead of the nuke. Another black hole, but I believe... Like, this is why Kircher bought a bunch of moon veils at the start, so whenever that black hole comes out, you can reapply that moon veil right away. Yeah. Interesting that he's using silk web to trigger that. Uh... I think he wants to avoid anything that's going to deal damage directly, just yeah, in that's case true. The, uh, the phase tip goes. So the silk web's very safe in that regard. Yeah, that's that's true. Um... And it's also a pretty quick animation. Yeah, that that helps as well. I was just thinking relative to some of the other options, like, say, just using the crystal, but that takes a while, um, especially relative to just the little box going. Well, and also it's the, the silk web, after each black hole, reapplies that slow again, too, so... Uh, no, <laughs> uh, black hole actually only strips from your side. It doesn't strip anything from Zeromus. Ah, uh, okay. Well, then it does... Yeah. And I mean, I know I, it's pretty common to assume that it will reset his speed, but um, I, I think Kirchin would be aware of that. Uh, of that. Kirchin keeps going. He is not missing a single beat here. Like, like if you look at how this is going, like this is not a slow Zeromus. Like, so he, he really cannot skip a beat here. No, everything is, like, timed to perfection. for the counter nuke. Yeah, going through this 1700 hit points at a time. Yeah, it looks like we're out of silk webs. We are using crystal to dwarf now. It, it accomplishes the same function as the silk web, but yeah, the animation's just a little bit longer.
Yeah, still, still in that first phase, still getting the virus. Yeah, as long as Kirsten doesn't do anything out of the ordinary, we should skip that transition. Um, yeah, like, nothing that he's doing here, like, he is meticulously avoiding doing anything that will trigger the, uh, trigger the phase change. Yeah, staying away from that fight command, staying away from items that deal direct damage at this point. Now, he wasn't afraid to deal direct damage at the beginning, but he was making sure that he doesn't uh, do damage within the range that would uh, flip that to the flip zero miss to the next level. Yeah, next like that, that. Yeah, like that spoon helped a lot to get there. But uh, now it's just perch W. Yeah, this is a, a strategy that requires a lot of practice and a lot of patience. Yeah. And you'll notice here, too, that he did name Edward after himself, as as <laughs> I would expect. Oh, and I guess Sheila had the Darkest Crystal. Good job, Sheila. This would be so much more exciting if uh, Perchin weren't doing this right now, like... Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and as in Venerable says in chat, Kirchin literally wrote the low-level boss guy. He is, you know, I, I, I miss seeing this kind of amazing stunt uh, throughout the rest of the World Series. So, <laughs> and as Ben Show, oh, yeah. Ben Show Sly says, uh, it's easier to mess up to be than to succeed. That's my motto in life. And is done. Kirchin wow. has finished at a. 105.12 GG Now we will see if uh, if Kirchen wants to join us for a, for an interview here. Yes, and I I certainly hope he does. In the meantime, let's try to catch up a little bit with some of the other runners. We did see that Darkness Crystal uh, be found at Sheila 2, and it uh, looks like both Night Dew and Wu Bear have picked up their crystal, so they're in uh, in go mode at this point as well. Hey, guys. You absolute madman. <laughs> I, I never learned how to grind Edward Bridge. Uh, I guess you didn't need to. That was amazing. Thanks. So, um, how how did you develop this? What uh, this strategy? I haven't seen this before. So, uh, do you want to walk us through it a little bit? Sure. It's actually uh, something we were talking about almost a year ago, I think, in Venerable and River and other people. Uh, it was originally a low percent strat where we were going to use Star Veils the whole time and uh, vampires to kind of reflect it. And then it just, with Edward Percent, you can use the spoon to kind of speed it up a little bit and get some of the early HP. But uh, yeah, it's just taking advantage of Z's uh, dead turns to uh, something to reflect that. So um, the fact that you, you were able to just use the hide to avoid all the Bags, you didn't really care what HP level your Edward was at going into the fight, right? No, not at all. As long as I got a silk web, I'm in go mode. So I kind of hope not to see Dark Crystal and all the good stuff. So the fact that 
you didn't see a darkness crystal made you more confident. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think it kind of hurt me in the last race because it's slower than grinding and just fighting Z regular, but it's safer and has less, you know, requirements. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like that was amazing. That just realizing as you're doing that, that like, oh wow, you're not. As long as you don't actually miss any, miss a single input, you're in absolutely no danger. That's uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it took a lot of uh, practice just because I would let fails drop and eat viruses, or I'd flip to mode two and then meteor to death and stuff like that. So once I got it down, it was uh, it's pretty repeat. It's I think maybe the the most difficult thing is making sure that you don't trip that second phase before you. Uh, switch to like because you you were using the spoon uh, to deal damage at the beginning, uh, but then at, at at a point you're like, okay, now all I'm going to be doing is. Rip. Yeah, I could have um, maybe brought the spoon guy up one more time, but I was afraid he'd trip it, so I was throwing vampires for a little extra. And then when I was right. close to 42k, I just kind of switched to silk webs and then crystal. Well, Ow. that was that was wonderful. I'm glad that we got a chance to see that. Yeah, like, I, I apologize for being like, oh, he he's just walking right by the shop with the Artemis, that's gonna be a pain, and <laughs> no, 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 not for you. I I never should have doubted you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it is a little stressful to skip so many chests, because I'm always afraid I'm gonna meet a boss that's gonna make me pay for missing that Artemis or missing that adamant in the chest somewhere. If nothing gets in the way, it's, uh, that's, that's the goal. Well, um, the good thing is you made it to the final table for this event now. You've qualified. Uh, the bad news is you were restreamed, so now everybody knows your secret. Uh, that's that's fine. <laughs> I, I figure if that you know rolls the ball forward and someone comes up with the next figs around the strat, it's all for the community. You know, I don't think there's a lot to worry about with people trying to do that. That's, uh, you know... You, you know, you didn't make it look all that easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Edward does have low HP, so you kind of have to have the right items throughout the rest of the run. But yeah, Zeromus is actually the least stressful part with enough practice. Yeah, I, I believe it. I mean, you know, it's it's a consistent timing. So once you know that timing, that's, uh, there you go. So uh, let me just put it th this way then. If your starting item is the crystal, you go to Toria, and the free item there is the pass, and then you find um, silk webs and veils available in a shop, and you just loot chests so you have enough money to buy it. Do you just go straight to Zeromus? Uh, Level pretty five, much. Five? Uh, the only thing I would need on top of that is a cursed ring. I need the Edward going back and forth to be at least relative agility, agility two for my. Ah. So in other races, what I would end up doing is I, uh, if I get a couple levels just by traveling the world, I'll just pick up one of my old Edwards. And I only need like 14, 15 agility to be high enough to make it work. So you don't need a lot of levels, really. Interesting. Very cool. Very cool. Well, uh, I definitely want to thank you uh, for uh, being restreamed so that we could watch this, so that we could uh, see this in action that uh, the chat was really excited to see it too so thank you uh for uh talking us through it on this interview as well yeah no problem i'm probably gonna add it to the uh the boss strats document in a couple days i have like the rough parts of it written up well it'll be, uh, i'll be looking forward to seeing that because uh you know that was yeah it's part of the campaign edward's the best character <laughs> i think you know, this is definitely an argument in his favor, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. Well, GG, thanks again, guys, for doing all the hard work while we get to have fun. Good luck to the rest of the runners. All right, and, thank you. Uh, thank you again. Yep. Thank you. <coughs> okay, bye. All right, GG is so once again to Kirch, and Make sure you give Kirch and Wells all of our uh, uh, featured follow follow tonight. him and yeah. And meanwhile, uh, there there's actually still a race going on here. <laughs>
Uh, looks like Wu Bear is in the giant. Um, trying to do a grind here. What uh, what has he pulled off of that? Might be doing a horseman grind with moon veils. Yeah, whatever it is, it's with moon veils, but let's see. Yeah, swapping off that spoon so he doesn't accidentally kill that, uh, kill that sorcerer, and we'll see what he's pulled for this. Oh no, classic key machines, which, you know, you put this, uh... Yeah, that fire counter is going to be a little rude, but... It is a lot of experience for each of these D machines that Yeah, the fire is not a counter, at least, so... Oh yeah, no, I, I'm sorry, the fire attack, actually. Yeah. Say. Okay, I, th I think it not being a counter is the only thing that really makes us doable. And I'm very sorry if I'm sounding strange right now, because that seems to be acting up. Uh, let me just adjust this really quickly. So it seems like this is a fight that, um, that Wu Bear should be able to um, complete safely, but it's going to be a bit timely since you're going to have to cure up in between each of the uh, the um, D machines that, uh, that get summoned here. Okay, hopefully that helped. Something is very strained with my headset lately, and I think I need to replace it at some point. It likes to not be connected anymore suddenly and then be connected. Uh, meanwhile, Meg the Cat is fighting the Baron Guards in the tower, uh, tower key rooms, so we know that they're going to get their... Um, uh, crystal for completing the tower here. Okay, but still no darkness crystal, and I don't think we're going to be seeing a repeat. I, I suspect uh, Maggie is going to keep looking. Yeah, I don't know if there's if we're going to see anybody other uh, attempt that uh, grindless zero in this fight. Yeah. And so the, the upside for this um, Wu Bear strategy is uh, as long as uh, there's no mistakes made, uh, this should be the only grind fight that that he'll need. Uh, this should be able you should be able to get all the experience that he wants in one fight, and then be ready to go right to Zeroness after that. Uh, the downside is, as mentioned before, it's kind of a long fight with having to heal up in between each of these D machines that are summoned. So. Yeah, like, there, there is a reason why you normally only do this if you have a, somebody you can cast weak, but right. with Artemis Arrows, it... Yeah, it, it's not bad. And, the like, with it being a long fight, if there is a mistake made and, um, like, he runs out of curing or uh, the timing gets off and a, a D machine wipes him with one too many fires, then coming back, that's a lot of time lost. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I believe that Wubear will be able to do it without making that mistake, but that's that is the downside. Yeah, like he does seem to have the timing set here, so it should be fine. With yeah, I agree. Everything's looking really good for them right now, without a doubt. Yeah. Meanwhile, Maggie is doing door grind with that crystal. Um. I'm not a huge fan of that, um, even at the best of times, and uh, you want a little more hit points on Edward. 
It, it might be that uh, Maggie's just getting a little desperate uh, since they haven't found that darkness crystal yet. So uh, just trying to, you, you know, use what they have at hand. And what they have at hand is a door grind. Yeah, and that's very true. Night Dew getting that darkness crystal from the Tower of Zot. So now we'll have uh, options open for grinding as well. Yeah, and it looks like he is heading straight to the moon there. Or maybe follow a, uh, a lead from Wooberry Giant. Yeah, it could be. It, it's interesting because there's a lot of different schools of thought as to the best grind for Edward. Uh, as yeah. you see, the best grind is a door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, uh, that's that is one of the fascinating the fact that there's no turns makes this a much more interesting flag set uh, for it because there's a lot of debate and thought as to what is going to be the best way, the most efficient way to get my Edwards to the level that they need to do. Yeah, like you have people pulling out strats from various, like you know, uh, from, from various uh, speed runs, like. We, we've had people whip it out the, uh, the unprecedented crisis uh, speedrun guide for notions of where to do your grinding. Yeah, as Tifa's Revenge noted, there have been talk about Red Dragon grinding in the Lunar Core. Um, there's a spot that we saw um, in last week's community race on the uh, fourth floor of the uh, Lunar Subterrain where you get the double King Ryu fight at a 25% rate just as a random encounter. Uh, we're seeing this D-Machine grind, a weakless D-Machine grind here. We've got a door grind going on, and then of course Kirchen's no grind. So there's lots of different things that, that we can see. Yeah, and of course there's also just straight in our bosses too. Um... Oh yeah. Which, I mean, if you're going into the moon at all, you're probably going to, at, at the very least, check out the, uh, the, the D-Looters. Yeah, that, that, duly, that D-Looters uh, spot uh, with 10 key items worth 200,000 experience is pretty nice. Yes, and, you know, sometimes if you're lucky, you'll get something that you can life glitch. Uh, this, this morning's, uh, you know, had the, had the Baron Guards, who we've seen already, but, yeah, you know... You know, I I saw I saw a four hundred k XP off of that one. And here we have Night Two having the random encounters on right from the beginning of the Lunar Subterrain. So going to be trying to find the most efficient battles on the way down, so that we'll be, he'll be gaining experience along the way as well. Yeah, it looks like he's doing chess grind and finds his dragons right there. Yeah, this is a sort of a battle that you really only want to try to tackle if you've got really good equipment. Adamant armors, crystal rings, things like that are, are going to be what you want in order to uh, survive dragons. Because Red D, Blue D is a very tough fight. Yeah. It is the worst possible uh, trap chest in the game, just because that, that blue dragon is a little bit nastier than the red. Yeah, the red dragon, I think, is got the uh, kind of pedigree of being the strongest, but that blue D, as, especially if you've got, I mean, it's a little bit less so, I think, in Edward percent, but when you're dealing with magic and, you know, you can just ice three that red D for lots of damage, but that blue D, like, there's nothing that you really like on it. Other than yeah. Nuke. Yeah. But luckily, these Artemis arrows really make the uh, the dragons a lot more enticing as well. Yeah, and they give out tons of XP. Yeah, that's the, that's the sweet reward at the end of the fight. That sweet, sweet XP. Yeah, sure isn't that black shirt. <laughs> no, <laughs> black shirt. That's like, that's like a... A booby prize no matter where. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, 
Doesn't uh, matter what no, scene, not what The ninja shirt still as well. A black shirt is just, uh, that's a rag. I find it's not the worst for Tella. <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, and see, when, once the King Ryu is found, then that's worth fighting. Definitely want to take this. Uh, yes, till 911. Perchin did destroy this team. That that was an amazing display. Yeah, like if you if you miss that fight, uh, you know, as soon as the stream is up, definitely go check uh, go check out the blood because that was that was something else. And uh, Wu is happy with his grind. Yeah. So that's the uh, and that's the thing we saw a lot. We saw slingshot levels. We saw yeah, lots of experience. Nice, yeah, got a very nice sixty-nine levels out of that. Yeah, so that that's what you get out of the uh, out of the uh, D machine grind is if you play it right, you get a ton of levels in just one fight. Yeah, got got that double slingshot. That's very nice. And yes, looks like we are gonna get a highlight of the uh, of that uh, that fight specifically. Because, uh, you know what, that, that needs to be seen to be believed. I saw it and I still don't believe it. I believe it, but I know how, how Kirchin <laughs> plays. <laughs> I mean, I think the part for me that was the most not believable about it was how smooth and easy Kirchin made it look. You know, like, everything was perfect. It, it didn't seem like there was any chance that anything was going to go wrong then. So that's yeah. what was, that's what was yeah. really amazing about it. Yeah, that, that timing was incredible. Wu Bear just sorting out his adamants. Yeah, this is going to be a very different fight than what we saw in Kirchens. We've got very powerful Edwards here. You know, levels in the 70s, 3,000 HP. That's like almost 10 times as much as Kirchens had. Yeah, just, uh, just a little bit short. And even the non-slingshotted uh, Edwards have a pretty decent one. They might be able to survive a non-nerf Big Bang if it's a low damage roll. Uh, but, I mean, the, the two uh, powerhouses are going to be what's going to carry them through this fight. Yeah, we're, we're going to see a single uh, Big Bang out of this, I'm expecting. Yeah, that, that sounds about right, yeah. Uh, Tiva's Revenge asking if anyone finished second. Uh, we just had a second place finisher of Chokosura at 1 hour 26.51 and one second behind Simbu at 1 hour 26.52. Yeah, GG to both of them. Um, you know, uh, normally you'd wonder at a, uh, <laughs> at, at a 20 minute difference, uh, but you know what? Well played, both of you guys. That was... Yeah, that was extremely close. A one second difference between the two. Yeah. And Wu Bear is about to fight the Astral Dragon. And 
And in fourth place, we have Dusty Grip coming in at an official SRL time of 128.04. GG to you. Seeing Maggie uh, pick up a first level or a fifth level Edward and uh, adjusting agility, I think Maggie might be making a play as well. Yeah, that. Uh... Yeah, a little lower level, so we might see some hide shuffling on this. But we will see how this goes. But as, as you can see here, we're coming in at like level 49, level 50. That's great for other party, uh, other party comps. Uh, it can be a bit dicier with, uh, with Edwards. Yeah, we see that, that right around there, just about a be a little bit more than that for uh, most of uh, Maggie's efforts. <laughs> we see uh, that uh, Berserk Spoon <laughs> level 74 deal just dealing out tons of damage. Yeah, you, uh, you know, you, you, you kid him out right and Edward will hit like a truck. Yeah. I mean, even like 2k from the archers, that's... that's just fine. Yeah, that's very nice supplemental damage. Yeah, and 2600, like... You know, th this would be perfectly respectable out of, you know, any normal melee character. Um, yeah, you could see Kane dealing that in a, in a in a Zeromus fight without a doubt. Yeah, or you know, say a Cecil on a T3, you're stuck with nothing better than say a light or a defense. You know, this is like an ice break. Yeah. No, I'm the one who's buffered. Now the other weaker Edwards fall to the Big Bang. But we're in medio phase. And it is another spoon to the face. And Wool Bear finishes in sixth place with a time of 1.30.20, immediately followed by Aizen Tayama at 1.30.42. Yeah, so GG's the blue bear. Yes, and while we see if uh, he wants an interview, Maggie is in the Zero Miss fight right now. Getting Bacchus up. And we should get Wu Bear in for an interview uh, shortly here. And I believe we have Woo Bear. Woo Bear, GG's. Hello, good friends. GG's. Yes. GG, that was very nicely done. Very nice slingshot on that. Uh, thank you. Not as nice as Kirchen, apparently, but... Oh, yeah. you need to watch that. Uh... I, I plan on it. Yeah, watch, watch the VOD of that one. I, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> but uh, that was... Were, uh, were you always planning on doing a D-Machine grind? Uh, for this Edward Percent? Uh, I've only done, like, this is my third Edward Percent, like, ever. And the other two I've done D-Machine, so it's just kind of what I'm used to. I, I don't really know. I, I know there's, like, a spot on the moon where you can grind, like, dragon and stuff, but I, I, 
I like being a sheep. Yeah, I mean, it worked for you uh, very nicely, and it, it's interesting to see it done without the weak, but uh, you made it work. Yeah, like, uh, how I found it is if you have Artemis arrows, it's fine. Um, if you don't, you need Hourglass 1s, and Hourglass 1, if you time it, it'll be perfect, where the uh, the alert guy will come off Hourglass as soon as the dragon. So, Artemis arrows equals Quick Dragon, so it didn't really matter. And the uh, the Moon Veils uh, made it the, uh, the physical attacks from the uh, from the D-Machine irrelevant. Yeah. Well. yeah, usually um, I... I I usually have five, so I'll just do the whole party, and then like, it's a little bit quicker. But I only had three, so I just killed off the two little guys. And also, I could not for the life of me remember where Cure Threes were, or if there were any. Oh uh, yeah, they were, uh, I think, right next to the Artemis arrows in Silver. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> I think I walked right by them. <laughs> but uh, a, a 11, level 74... Edward with a spoon can do make a short work out of Zeromus, though, right? Yeah, who needs a heal when you just spoon someone in the face repeatedly? Yeah. I actually, I missed a dragon. Usually I'm 76, I think, which, it, whatever. But um, my other characters are a little bit higher, so they have, uh, they can survive a big bang. But I missed one of the dragons, so I kind of, they just went down hard. Oh, well, you didn't need him. <laughs> nope. Spoon word. I was so happy when I saw that <laughs> when I went downstairs and uh, I was like, ooh, spoon. Yeah, I think that's like the relief of a lot of runners when they're 100% like, oh, good, we have the spoon. <laughs> yeah, a buddy of mine knew he was doing 100% and I think he had five in a row with no spoon. It was pretty impressive. Ooh, that's, yeah, that's, that's a long streak. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad. Shout outs to Calamity, by the way. Well, there you go. It's right in the name. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, do you have any uh, final thoughts on this flag set or this run tonight? Uh, not not too much. I mean, I, I didn't think I'd like Edward Percent as much as I do, but he's actually pretty good if you get a nice bow in his and it's not too bad. Yeah, with the right equipment, he could definitely do some work without a doubt. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a little bit trollier than it is, but it's actually fairly easy as long as you get like an early game start. Nothing to. Or finding adamant plus spoon in Ablin Cave was loaded, by the way. They had like Artemis bow, uh, adamant. Oh, okay, so that's where that adamant was. I knew you picked it up, but I didn't actually yeah. catch you. Yeah, I saw that, and I think Artemis arrows were in there, and uh, some other things in the chest, and I was like, wow, okay. Yeah, I think there was a power power robe, maybe an Artemis bow. So yeah, yeah, power Evelyn. robe as well. Evelyn was really good. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, as I soon as I to... saw that, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, no, that's fine. You can keep going. I was just gonna say, as soon as I saw that monster chest, I was like, "Cool, I guess I'll loot everything in here." Ah, and Maggie has finished uh, in tenth place with uh, time of one thirty-five thirty-nine. Like, I'll get out of here so you guys can give them an interview. All right. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us over there. Yes, thank no you. Problem. Have a good one. And following shortly on Maggie's heels, we have Night Dew done in 11, at 136.21. And Baka Shinobi and Dark Kobold at 136.27 and 136.35, respectively. And we'll see if we can get a quick interview with uh, Maggie and Night Dew. Uh, some very nice play from all of our runners. Um, and again, you know, we're we're uh, we're really you know at Kirchen's uh, thing here, but everyone here was fantastic. So make sure you give everyone a follow because they're all really good, um, and, uh, and you know they're they're all great to watch. And uh, we are joined by Night Dude. Night Dude, GG is on your finish tonight. Thank you very much. So. Uh... I think one of the, the most interesting things about uh, this run that we saw today was all four of the featured runners did a different thing to prepare for the Zeramis fight. And it looked like your strategy was to utilize like random encounters and the trap chests in the lunar subterrain. Uh, was, is that going to be your plan going through? Is that always going to be your plan? It was kind of a, it was kind of still a little bit of an experiment. I haven't done that much uh, any percent work there. 
Um, I, I did kind of like the whole uh, hide four Edwards and just let Spoonward with the Adamant go to the town on the uh, beam at the ZXP there. Um, but honestly, I mean, th then I got like nothing but Ryu fights and it was, it, it just sped along. So honestly, eh, 50 50. Depends on what I got. And, uh, ooh. looks like, uh, oh, it looks like we're also joined by Maggie the Cat. Maggie. Uh, might be having some issues with audio there, so uh, we'll go in. Uh, Night do anything else uh, that you wanted to add about the stream or about the race? Uh, felt really, really generous. <laughs> I mean, arty arrows, all the bows you could ask for, power robes. I mean, uh, we didn't want for anything there. Oh, yeah, it was uh, very loot heavy. Uh, I kind of felt like I overlooted, honestly. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, when it's just, like, giving everything out, it's kind of hard to know when to stop, because you're like, oh, but yeah, there could be more. If all the chests are so good, why would you want to stop opening them, right? <laughs> well, it could be your fourth Adam armor. Yeah, and that helps. <laughs> so, um, uh, are, are you planning on doing any more of these Edward races? At least one. Uh, depends on what I'm kind of doing tomorrow morning. I hope to jump into at least one more. Uh, I need to do a little bit more research. I uh, I did double take. I knew I knew darkness had to be somewhere easy when uh, Kirchin threw that uh, absolutely insane dot done uh, GG by the way. Um, but yeah, um, skipping Zot. I mean, it doesn't feel like a great play when all your characters are Edwards, but it was the play. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. And uh, thank you for letting us watch your race tonight. GG's again, Night Dude. Absolutely, thank you. All right, and uh, we'll try this once more. Uh, Maggie the Cat, uh, do we have you? Well, unfortunately, it looks like we might still be having some um, issues with Maggie. So I just want to say GG's to Maggie. Uh, they did a very good job uh, and did the... Uh, Use it, utilizing just the door grind to get ready to that for that Zeromus fight, didn't need the moon, was very impressive as yeah, well. Yeah, that, that was very nice. That that looked nice for, uh, in the Zero fight, but uh, they pulled that off really nicely. Yeah, without a doubt. So, um, uh, looks like uh, we've got our wonderful tracker, Scala Kitty, looking for a uh, raid uh, that we're going to be doing here. Uh, also remember to give uh, her a follow as well as Smeepty, who did the tracking work tonight. So uh, good job to both of them. It's always good to have the people behind the scenes uh, do a really good job because it makes yes. what me and Neon do a lot easier. Yeah, everyone on the team is absolutely wonderful and absolutely worth a point. So uh, Neon, uh, are, are you going to uh, attempt a really low-level uh, Edward fight now? I'm sorry, my headset cut out right there. What was... Uh, I was going to say, are you going to uh, jump into an Edward race to do uh, uh, Zeromus at really low level, 500 HP or less? You know, I, I have a really bad habit of going, I saw this once before, I could do that. Um, <laughs> this one, I think, not so much. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to stick to over-leveling. Um, that that seems to at least get the job done for me, so. <laughs> yeah, like anything that requires, you know, getting the timing that down to a science, uh, not for me. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that highlight, and uh, yes. Uh, anything, anything that requires practice is a little much for me, so. <laughs> Uh, looks like we've got a, a target. We're going to head over to uh, Speedruns Rochester, uh, who are playing uh, Free Enterprise right now as part of Torathon 2. So we're going to go ahead and head on over there. Do you have any last thoughts before we go, Neon? Um, no, I believe that's going to be Witch's Hex, who's going to be playing over there, at least if I remember reading Twitter right. Um, so make sure to give her uh, some big cheers. And... Uh, Yes, we've got two more races coming up, and uh, hope to see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.